Hi there. Welcome to Active Lessons with myself. Today I want us to look at lesson three, where we will be plotting 2D graphs, 3D graphs, dimensional by the way, and some cultural graphs that we all know from math, such as bar graphs, histograms, or logarithm graphs. Okay, let's start. So the first part, we are going to start with 2D graphs. Let's plot 2D graphs. But at first, before we start, I want us to define some few things, such as a 2D, um, it is a two-dimensional graph, and it can be plotted on octave using a plot statement. You have to define your x-axis and y-axis. Graph labels, it is important to um, note that octave is case sensitive. So when you're implementing the graph labels, such as title, um, use small casing, and it will be title, bracket, text, and then you'll put whatever you want to title your graph as, x-label, y-label, or legit. So octave can um, single out your graphs, say you're plotting a lot of graphs and you want to um, specifically identify each graph, you can make use of the color, marker, and the light style. So B can be representing your color blue, green for G, um, K, which is black, and red, R. So different markers can be um, a plus sign for vertical cross, a star, you can use the asterisk sign, circle, you can use the circle, and X for diagonal cross. The line style, if you want your line to be solid, dotted, or impulses, that you use the following. So say, for example, you want to plot a dotted cross line, you would just use a dot plus an R for it to be red. Okay, so let's start with the first example. I'm going to work on editor section and command windows both all at the same time. So for the first example, let's define our axis. X axis will make it a vector of 0 all the way to 10 with a spacing of 0 0.1. My Y will be, let's draw a trigonometric graph. So let's say sine x plot a 3d graph we are going to say plot x comma y note kids case sensitive if you use small letter x um make sure you stick to the small letter x when you say plot because it is case sensitive so it will make a huge impact um i want to title small letters i want to title my graph um y sorry about that y is equals to sine of x, semicolon, spacing, there we go. And I also want my grid to be on. Right on, perfect. Let me just put a semicolon here on x. It is, I don't want it to be defined. That side is going to take up a lot of our page space. Example one, pasting it onto command windows. For learning purposes, and there we go, grid on. There we go, where's my graph? Perfect. Now let's do example two. For example two, we are going to plot a straight line. So say we have our x axis and y axis, two coordinates from one point to another, one end to another. So we have zero, is to six and two is to six. Mindful that this is x and y and this is x and y. It's in the form of x and y. Right? So to plot a straight line from one end to another an octave, you will have to separate your um, x and y's. Bracket your x's together and your y's together. If you run this file on octave, you can simply run here, guys, but for learning people, so I'm going to come to command windows. There you go. So for your first um, X and Y, which is 0 and 6, this is where they meet. And for the second coordinates, the point, it's 2 and 6, so it's 2 and 6. There you go. For example, 3, I want us to multi-plot um, a graph on the same page. Let's define the axis, which is going to be x is equal to zero as to 10, but like I want the spacing of 0 0.1. 
wanted to show it's a very long number that's going to appear and take the full space of octave. Y1 is going to be sine of x. Y2 is going to be cos of x. Now I want us to multiply these graphs and be able to single them out, to be able to differentiate them from each other. So I'm going to say plot x, y1. Now let's define our graphs. I want it to be a dotted with cross and red line, comma, x, y2. The second function, I want it to be a solid line with some stars and B for blue. Great. Title our graph on us, title it Y1 and Y2. Great. So put on. For learning purposes, I'm going to run this on command windows. Great, now let's see our graph. There's our graphs. We have y1, y2. What I just did is I included the legend. It's just to make it more clear. y2, it's the star one, and y1, it's the red one. So for example, for I want us to subplot. Let's plot three graphs on different positions. So our x is still going to be defined as zero. Spacing of 0 0.1 is to 10. And our y1 will still be sine of x. y2 will be cos of x. And y3 will be 10 of x. Let us tell Octave to subplot. So we have two rows, two columns, and this must be plotted on position one, which is going to be plot x, y1. Subplot, make sure the spelling, there's no spelling error. Two rows, two columns, second position, comma, plot x, y2, subplot, two rows, two columns, third position, plot x, y3. Ensure there's no spelling error, guys. It's very, very important. Perfect. Let's see what Octave did for us. And there you go. This is the first um, y1 y2 and y3. Let us plot a bar graph, a histograph, and a polar graph. So let's first start with the bar chart. Let's define the x-axis to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And we want the y-axis to be 1.2, 2.5, 3.0, just basically 3, 1.6, and 1.1. So bar, x, and y. Guys, you could simply run this on Octave, but for learning purposes, I just want to demonstrate for someone who might need this. Okay, let's see. I didn't put my same colon there. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so I need to um, <laughs> clear this. Here, of here, CLC, great. Great, and there you go. We have the first graph, our bar graph, example five with our axis 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and we defined the y-axis as well. I want to draw your bar graph on a horizontal, um, more appearance look like. All you have to do is use the same everything. 
but this time we are going to incorporate bar H, which basically says a bar, but looking more horizontal, CLC, paste. Okay, so here is our graph. If you have any questions, post them down on the comment section. We are going to say X is equal to rand, um, numbers between 100. So hist X. Let's look at our graph and there you go. We have a histogram of random numbers. And you could also similarly do the same thing. For example, random numbers of just 10. So random 10 numbers and draw a histogram. There you go. Let's plot a polar graph. Define our x-axis to be zero. Um, with the spacing of pi divided by 20. All the way up to pi. Let me just spray everything up. Don't want it to appear. Let's define our y-axis to be y. Scrolls to sign x. Plot the polar of x and y. Great. Run this file or just copy and paste everything onto your command windows. There we go. We have our polar plotted. Yeah. Now let's do trigonometric graphs. Semilog x, which will plot logarithmically spaced x axis. Zero all the way to five with a spacing of one. Define our x axis exponent negative y over one. Semilog x x y grid on okay paste everything that side our function is plotted i did not label it we are this time going to plot semi log y we should plot the logarithmically spaced y axis semi log y perfect Example 10, CLC, perfect. Grid on. Our function is plotted. Okay, now let us look at subplotting a log log together with a semi-log. Okay, so for the graph one, we are going to plug a semi log y. Let's define our x axis and the x is equals to zero is to five with a spacing of, let's make it one. Let's define our y one and it will be exponent negative x over one. Subplot. Two columns, I mean two rows, one column, position one. We want to plot semi log y. X, y, great, and we want the grid to be on. Graph two. X, this is the first x, by the way x1, so this will be x1, y1. So x2 is equal to 0 is to 5 with the spacing of 1. And our y2 will be exponent x2 over 2.
let us subplot two rows, one column position two, log, log, x2, y2. We basically plot in that and we want the grid on. Ensure there's no spelling errors. This is a negative. Okay, so this is our first graph and that's the second graph. Now, let us plot three G graphs. Let's define some few um, functions here. So for the first example, let us define our x-axis and y-axis. So we are going to say x is equal to y and is equal to lin space. Don't print E there, you'll get an error. Um, is equal to mesh, correct? X, Y. This will return matrices X, Y corresponding to a full 2D grid. Let's define Z, which is X squared plus Y to the power of two, which is squared. Okay, so now let's create a mesh. X, y said i want to also um, label each axis i'm going to say x label notice the spelling x axis z axis perfect let us plot this graph For the example two, I want us to plot a mesh, which is gonna be similar to example one, but the only difference here is we are going to use a negative sign here. More similar to example one, but with a few differences here, we are going to line space to five and use a negative sign here. And there is a bit of a difference to how our graph um, looks like. There is some slight changes. Now let us plot a serve. Same as example two, but the only difference is we are plotting a serve. We are plotting a serve similar to our previous examples. I'm still I'm going to leave it as negative here for the z axis, just line spacing to 15. And there's our graph. Let's plot a contour. Mesh C. And you can see there's a little bit of some contouring at the bottom. Well, that's it for me. This was more of a theoretical understanding for lesson three to help you understand and get the concept. Um, coming up will be examples, more detailed examples for you to kind of understand and grasp to this graph. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, um, subscribe, and share with your peers who might also need help.